welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Kern Community College District Board of Trustees. Board will reconvene. I'd like to ask Jennifer to call the roll, please. Here. 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 Yeah. Here. Sufficient number of members present. A quorum has been established. We'll proceed with our agenda and begin the Pledge of Allegiance. I would like to ask Trustee Carter to please lead us in the poll. Like Thank you, Trustee Carter. Moving on to our next item, report of actions taken in closed session as required. In closed session, the board unanimously voted to deny an appeal from an administrative determination on the discrimination complaint of a full-time faculty member pursuant to Title V, Section 5938. Our next item is public comments. This time, the public may address the Board of Trustees on any matter within the subject matter jurisdiction of the board that is not on the agenda. The board staff, the board and staff are not obligated to comment on or respond to or address comments by the public. At the opening of this meeting, names and, agen and agenda items were taken for public comments. This afternoon, we have a couple of speakers. In first with Angela Williams. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Angela Williams. I'm a classified employee at Bakersfield College. In December, I will have been with the Kern Community College District for 30, almost 30 years. Um, I had a, there was an incident that occurred in a meeting this week at um, Equal Opportunity and Diversity Advisory Committee on our campus. And as my, as we were meeting during, during that meeting, I was deeply offended by a statement made by a faculty member. Um, they basically said in an in a, in a environment of shared governance that the voices of classified employees were not necessary, they were not devalued. As we had an opportunity to address the charge to increase the number of, of classified staff members on that committee to equal the same number of faculty members that were on that committee, they said that we were unable to do so because we do not think for ourselves that we were basically puppets for management, that we are at all, we are considered at will employees, and that we can't we can't make a decision for ourselves. The time I've spent at Bakersfield College, I have been very active in multiple initiatives, committees, um, working with working with people through budget committee, district wide budget committee. Um, EODAC as re recently um, and very engaged. And I have a, plenty of other classified employees who are qualified and participate in activities in that way. And I felt completely humiliated, demeaned on behalf of my fellow classified employees. When someone tells me that I can't, I don't, I don't have skills to critically think or operate or make decisions without someone else telling me how to do that. Um, because they think that I owe allegiance to a manager. And I had to, and I took a moment and I said, uh, I told the person, we very clearly expressed that in the meeting that I was deeply offended um, on behalf of classified employees and that we have a contract in place as um, CSEA members, we have a contract in place that holds our jobs secure. And when that was in, and I'm not understanding that considering us at will employees, I said, no, and it's very difficult based upon our contract. And I've been here long enough to fire people. Um, there's a process that has to happen that, that we have to go through. So why would we do whatever management tells us to do? If you've been a part of our district at any point, you know, there are moments when during a board meeting, we have been outside protesting as CSCA members like, for reasons that we didn't agree with the management or what management was offering us. So but what I was, I was shocked, concerned, heartbroken. And even though during that meeting, I did not express those emotions, I didn't burst into tears or one way because that's not who I am. I'm a person who stands up and fights. 
and advocates for our, not only our staff, but our students. Our students deserve to have equity on our campus. We deserve to have, they, they deserve to have equal opportunity. Our classified staff deserve to have equal opportunity to hear their voices heard and be part of the decision-making process on any campus, any part of the district where we have the opportunity to do so. The fact that they think that that's okay to treat us in that manner, um, it broke my heart. I've worked with many faculty members on campus and different committees and many managers, and they have, I have not, even the time I've been here, when there was a difference of agreement, we have worked together to come to a resolution that happened to work for all of us. And that was the goal, and my thought that was the goal of this committee, and that's not been the case. I've been on the, this committee for um, since past, this past spring, and every meeting we're talking about things that do not impact what the, it do not affect the goal. We're talking about little minutia instead of actually thinking of ways to help the students and help the staff, um, help faculty be comfortable in our campus environment. And that's not what's, that's not what's happening. Some of the students, even afterwards the meeting, they I spoke to, they were offended by words they heard whispered by faculty, one faculty member to another that were angry that they showed up at the meeting. And they were very rude and crude words I don't normally use and I won't say them there, but it was rude. They overheard them and they were upset by it. I basically was traumatized. And then as we moved through the week, the days after, um, there were multiple emails that went through that continued to trigger my trauma again. And I'll say that it was trauma. I chose not to engage in the email stream. I chose to step back and be in, and stand up. And a person put out a false narrative indicating that they were attacked, that it was a witch hunt and there was a mob scene. There was no mob scene in that meeting. Ms. Just, Williams, your time is approaching. So if you can summarize your comments. So my comment is, my final comment is that the false narrative that's being put out there, it is not true. We are advocating that people, the, there's a group from the um, Liberty and BC Liberty Institute that's instigating arguments and charges against our arguments that are false against classified staff and specific specifically but people of color and it's hard hurting us deeply and we need to be the board I believe the board needs to step forward and make a decision or decide something about removing that and, and it's in, it's impacting the lives of faculty staff and students there who are against their their actions thank you our next speaker is Ms. Maria Elizondo. That's correct. So good afternoon, Board of Trustees. I would like to bring forward to the Board of Trustees that the representatives are devaluing classified staff by saying that we are incapable of speaking for ourselves, that we lack integrity and competency, that our vote on this certain committee, the Equal Opportunity and Diversity Advisory Committee, EOBAC should not count, that we are not equal to tenured professors. I would like to make the board aware of the mindset that is poison to this progress. I too have sat on this committee since the spring and every meeting we have not been able to move forward for the better of the student because every meeting we are at a clash it seems that politics has bled into this meeting and where they stand in their politics is affecting the decisions that are being made for the good of the student on campus, for the good of the classified staff on campus, for the other uh, professors on campus that do not think like they do. And so this is all impacting the Bakersfield College community. And it has been going on since I came on board in January. I would also like to ask the board um, that they denounce this elitism, that the faculty be held accountable for their words and their actions because it matters and it matters to our students. The students that were there that day were offended and they were hurt because one of the other members indicated what the F are they doing here when the students walk through the door. That is totally unacceptable. We should know who we serve. And we should be aware of it. What I felt and saw take place at our last meeting on Tuesday morning was malicious intent. I was offended and devalued by faculty on the Equal Opportunity and Diversity Advisory Committee, more specifically by Jimena da Silva Tavares, chemistry professor. 
I have worked at Bakersfield College for over 20 years as an outreach representative in the EOPS based out of the Delano campus in the rural communities. Now we all know that when we work for Bakersfield College and the community knows that you are always working and promoting BC. Everywhere, at the store, after church, at the library, at soccer games, everywhere. People come to us and ask us questions about Bakersfield College and classes offered, even financial aid, all the time. In my time here, I have assisted students through the five steps of matriculation, provided enrollment and financial aid workshops at local high schools in English and in Spanish for students and their parents, most recently for the rural initiatives out of the Delano campus. I love what I do, and this job has provided for my daughter and I. Now, to have a peer devalue my word, my vote, and my work because I am not tenured professor is disheartening. I was marginalized by a specific faculty member who indicated that classified representation should be kept to a minimum on the EODAC due to our specific limitations, implying that we are not free thinkers, smart or as educated as they are. Quote, there is a reason we have tenured that is to protect freedom of ideas. The argument that you, meaning classified, have pressure to vote a certain way because your jobs are on the line. So we have faculty tenured and means to protect us from pressure. Apparently we classified like individual thought because we aren't professors or competent enough to communicate or think critically or contribute to the college. I want to believe that my contribution to this college is valuable, that I am seen and do not have to hide because of the color of my skin. All this is difficult to accept because once again, I have worked hard for over 20 years and I have proven myself I am not valued and seen as an equal to my peers. I don't recognize what I bring to, I don't recognize what I bring to the table and don't value my hard work, commitment and dedication is what I was told. You are now telling me that I need to think this way? I do, will not accept it. I have advised and guided thousands of students through BC process and the four-year institutions to provide active members of society who are now professionals in our communities throughout California and throughout the states. That is rewarding to me. So, Lissandra, your time is approaching. Summarize your comment. Back to you trying to explain to us classified the students present and the administration and other faculty at the EODAC meeting that independent thought is the primary reason we should not be able to have a voice was hurtful and shocking, especially for a member of the committee that has diversity in its name. This faculty member asserted that unlike classified staff, we have jobs, and I quote, at risk, tenured faculty can't be fired. I, on the other hand, could be fired. Therefore, my voice and my vote as a classified and my peers should be muted and we should not have voting rights on the EODAC. We are also told that we lack experience and depth of knowledge to contribute to the college wide committees and that our voices are not important. This faculty member, as well as three other voting faculty members in the EODAC meeting communicated that I was not competent to participate on this committee with equal representation because I am not a tenured professor. This was demeaning to classify it and myself and frankly unacceptable. In closing, I'm, I'm bringing this forward to the, the board. I hope you will send a message of unity and stand with us. And this is unacceptable and will not be tolerated throughout our campuses because words matter. This board must hold people accountable and denounce such behavior for the good and the success of the students and the work we are trying to accomplish in assisting them through their college pathways. For your comments. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the board at this time? Sure. My name is Mike Barrett. I'm a Sir Coastal Community College. I'm CFT Chapter 7. And um, in regards to the comments that we just made, I just want to point out that uh, participatory governance is required. Okay. It's already difficult. As a representative, my top five members that will sit on participatory governance committee. This is making it more difficult. Um, if you don't mind, I'll try to work with you or reach out to you. I'm going to kind of talk to you a little bit. You know, probably more in HR matter, but it depends right into you. I just, um, 
Uh, sorry about the comments that we made, Dr. Keith. I guess it just needs to be up to the that process. I just want to make you aware that it's already the process directly to the top by the police law, which is for governance. In fact, it's going to be Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else wishing to speak to the board at this time? Okay. Here you're seeing none. We'll move on to the next item on the agenda. Number six, preliminary items. Letter A, approval of consent items, business services other than construction, agenda items 8A through 8E, business services construction, agenda items 10A through 10WW, educational services, agenda items 12A through 12C, and human resources, agenda items 14A through 14. I have a motion by Trustee Meek. Second. Seconded by Trustee Corkins and discussion. Hearing or seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Next item is letter B, approval of the minutes. So moved. A motion by Trustee Corkins, seconded by Trustee Meek. Any discussion? Hearing or seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Next item, correspondence to the Board of Trustees and our communications, Chancellor Krish. No correspondence or communication to report at this time. Thank you. That brings us to letter D, first reading. This is a presentation of the proposed revision to the current Community College District Board Policy 2220, Committees of the Board. Item is a first read, so it's for information only. Any comments or questions from members? If there are none, we'll move on to the next item, letter E, first reading of the presentation of proposed revision to the current Community College District Board Policy 6200, Budget Preparation, and 6250, Budget Management. Item is also for information. Any questions? If there are none, we'll move on to the second reading. This is letter F, second reading and approval of the Bakersfield College Research Laboratory Technology Bachelors of Science proposal. We have a motion by Trustee Meek. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Trustee Corkins. Any discussion? Hearing or seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Trustee Aguilar, just a quick comment. I want to recognize Dean Steve Waller, and uh, Professor James Megara and the audience. I think they were here to uh, for this particular agenda item and I'm sure they're pretty excited. I just wanted to acknowledge that. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Brings us to the next item. This is letter G. Receive the joint interest-based bargaining initial proposal between the Kern Community College District and Kern Community College District, Community College Association, California Teachers Association, National Education Association, as shown in the Human Resources Report. Questions on this particular item? This is for information only. If there are none, we'll move on to the next item. Letter H, receive the California School Employees Association chapters 246, 336, and 617 initial reopener proposal to the current community college district as shown in the human resources. Comments or questions on this item? Now we'll move on to business services approval. Letter A, authorization for the interim chief financial officer to execute an agreement between the current community college district on behalf of Portable College and Vector USA to install Wi-Fi equipment in Jameson Stadium. Term of the agreement is from October 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2023. The cost to the district not to exceed $296,516.69 to be paid from the GU001 unrestricted fund and a PC102 capital outlay fund. I have, approval. I have a motion by Trustee Corkins. Is there a second? Seconded, Seconded by Trustee Cannell. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Question by Trustee Carter. What are you talking about? Portable College? No, not in the state. This is the state. 
So stadium's just gone through an upgrade. Might have done something in the basketball. This is the parking lot. That's what it was. Yeah. This is in the stadium. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? If there are none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Bring none. The motion carries. Next item. Authorization for the interim chief financial officer to enter into an agreement for lease of real estate between the Kern Community College District on behalf of Saracosa Community College and Gata Properties for the use of real property that consists of an approximately 2,000 square foot building located at 151 North Main Street in Bishop, California, 93154. The term of the lease is from October 1st, 2022, to September 30th, 2025. The cost of the district is not to exceed $130,464 to be paid from the RP-634 restricted fund. Is there a motion? Motion by Trustee gomez Heitzberg. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Trustee Jimenez. Any discussion on this item? Hearing or seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? And the motion carries. Next item is a resolution to authorize application by the Kern Community College District for the San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District Public Benefit Grant Program for calendar year 2022 to obtain funding for the purchase of new electric, hybrid, or alternative fuel vehicles eligible under the grant. The total amount payable to the district is up to a maximum of $100,000 to be deposited into a new restricted program fund. We have a motion by Trustee Corkins. Is there a second? Seconded by Trustee Meeks. Resolution, so it requires a roll call vote. Jennifer, pull the board. Yes. Oh. Yes. 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 Thank you. Yeah, recorded the vote is six eyes, one no. Resolution passes. Next item is authorization for the interim chief financial officer to execute an agreement between the current community college district on behalf of the Workforce and Economic Development and Farm Worker Institute of Education Leadership Development, Inc. or FIELD for the distribution of funding allocated by AB 179 to field. The term is from September 6, 2022 through June 30th, 2024. The amount payable to field is not to exceed $8 million to be paid from the new restricted program fund. Second. Motion by Trustee gomez Iceberg, Seconded by Trustee Jimenez. Questions or discussion? I ask for a vote. Chancellor Christian, could you provide me with a little bit of background information on this particular item? Yes. Um, this is a, an exciting opportunity. Um, a field has secured $8 million to do some cutting edge work with workforce development involving uh, English language learners and are partnering with, our, uh, with uh, Vice Chancellor J Trudy Gerald on this work. This money is passed through money. Uh, the State Workforce Development Board uh, requested the current community college district to act as the fiscal agent for the money to be passed through to field. Thank you, Trustee Aguilar. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? We have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Trustee Agbalag, I would like to recognize Mr. Viarina, who's in the audience, and appreciate the partnership. Thank you, Trustee. Um, next item is letter E, approval of a resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Kern Community College District, authorizing the issuance of Kern Community College District Facilities Improvement District Number One, which includes Kern, San Bernardino, and Tulare counties election of the 2016 General Obligation Bond Series B and actions related to. The Agbalog, the Board Finance and Audit Subcommittee discussed the nature of the bonds from with administration and Dale Scott and Community. 
with Trustee Meek. We have a motion on the board. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Trustee Corkins. Any further discussion or questions on this item? Okay, this is a resolution, so it requires a roll call vote. Jennifer, will you pull the board? Yes. 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 Aye. Thank you. Resolution passes 7 0. Next item, number nine business services approval is a construction items letter A authorization for the interim chief financial officer to enter into a construction agreement between the Kern Community College District on behalf of Bakersfield College and James E. Thompson, Inc. EBA JTS construction for the Bakersfield College Campus Center third floor kitchen project. Term is from 2022 through April 28, 2023. The cost of the, the cost of the district is not to exceed $1,342,500 to be paid from the MJ100 local capital outlay fund. We have a motion by Trustee Carter. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Trustee Jimenez. Questions or discussion on this side? Hearing or seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Next item is authorization for the interim chief financial officer to enter into a construction agreement between the Kern Community College District on behalf of Bakersfield College in Raycar Development and Construction for the Bakersfield College Delano Campus Regenerative Farm Project. The term is from October 24, 2023, I'm sorry, 22, through December 31st, 2022. The cost to the district is not to exceed $426,000 to be paid from the RP 613 restricted. So moved. We have a motion by Trustee Corkins. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Trustee Cannell. Any questions or discussion on the item? Hearing or seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Our next item is number 11, educational services approval, letter A, approval of the attached curriculum reports of courses, program certificates, and new community service education course offerings as part of the district's curriculum for Porterville College. I'm approved. We have a motion by Trustee Corkin, seconded by Trustee gomez Heitzberg. Any comments or questions? Hearing or seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Next item is an authorization for the interim chief financial officer to execute an agreement between the current community college district as the central mother load regional consortium, fiscal agent, and Tulare County Office of Education as a subgrantee of the K-12 Strong Workforce Grant rounds three and four for the pathway coordinator providing technical assistance on regionally aligned economic and workforce development initiatives. The term for round three is from July 1st, 2021 through December 31st, 2022. And for round four it is from July 1st, 2022 through September 30th, 2023. The amount payable to the local educational agency is up to $169,000 to be paid from the RP 677 restricted fund. So approved. I have a motion by Trustee Corkins. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Trustee Jimenez. Comments, questions, or discussion? Hearing or seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Next item, letter C, authorization for the interim chief financial officer to enter into a sub award agreement between the Kern Community College District and the Kern County Superintendent of Schools regarding the California Regional K-16 Education Collaboratives Grant. The term is from July 1st, 2022, June 30th, 2026. The amount payable to the district is in the amount of $3,920,000 to be deposited into a new restricted fund. A motion by Trustee Meek. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Trustee Jimenez. Any discussion on the item? Mm -hmm. Hearing or seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. The motion carries. Next item is approval for the interim chief financial officer to sign the memorandum of understanding between the Kern Community College District on behalf of Saracoso Community College and the Inyo County Office of Education. Term of the agreement is September 1st, 2022 
to August 31st, 2025. The cost of the district is $175,464. You paid from RP 534 restricted. A motion by Trustee Gomez Heitzberg. Is there a second? Seconded by Trustee Canal. Discussion on the item? Hearing or seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Next item is number 13, human resources approval, letter A, adoption of the memorandum of understanding between the Kern Community College District and the California School Employees Association chapters 246, 336, and 617 regarding FTE, increase of department assistant to positions at Saracoso Community College. We have a motion by Trustee Meek. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Trustee Jimenez. Any discussion on the item? Hearing or seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. The next item is number 15, committee ad hoc committee reports, report of foundation activities by Trustee okay. Liaison. Uh, first up is resource development facilities committee report to the board like to report that the Resource Development Facilities Committee met on October 7th, 2022, and discussed the current usage of Bakersfield College's Memorial Stadium. The committee also received an update on the potential development opportunities for the DC Delano Randolph campus and KCCD's downtown properties. The committee discussed and suggested the potential formation of a community group to assist BC staff in developing revenue generation strategies for Memorial Stadium, and other high interest BC facilities. The committee requested an updated appraisal for the Delano Randolph campus and provide development and or sale options for its Delano Randolph campus and district downtown property. That concludes my report. Next item is B, Finance and Audit Committee. Reports of the board. Uh, the board finance and audit subcommittee met on October Any other reports? Questions on the reports? If there are none, we'll move on to number 16, reports, letter A, facilities report links. Are there any questions from members of the board regarding the link provided in advance? If there are none, we'll move on to letter B, faculty reports. Nick Strobel, BC Academic Senate President. It's, it's with uh, President Aguilar, Board of Trustees and Chancellor Christian. It's, I have a heavy heart after, you know, what, uh, what happened with our EODAC uh, committee and um, what, um and and the hurt that's been caused with our classified staff uh, uh representatives you know on the committee as well as what is i guess the, some view by very few faculty um uh -huh. want to share with you um that our our faculty co-chair of that uh, group did reach out to classified staff um on, on the committee expressing her support. And um, I was there for a short part of the, the committee uh, meetings. I in between planetary and field trip shows. So I um, I spoke uh, about the um, the committee charge, which is what this this whole thing you know is about. Um, I support the the proposal. Um, I uh, um, I support the proposal to have the number of classified staff equal to the, the faculty number. The, the classified staff that I've worked with on various committees I've served have all provided valuable insights and have felt free to speak their mind and they have shared their opinions. Also, the classified staff at BC have received training in critical thinking through their own college education. Many of them from our faculty, you know, they're at BC. 
if a reasoned argument can be made for a particular action, then I believe the, I not believe, I, I've got a lot of experience. I've been at BC for 26 years. So I'd say experience um, that the classified staff would come to the same conclusion as any reasonable faculty uh, member would. Um, the argument I've heard against making the classified representation equal to the, the faculty representation has focus on the desire to, um, well, to ensure faculty power, to override any classified objection. And the argument assumes that classified staff would be intimidated by administration to vote a certain way. <laughs> that belief does strike me as a bit elitist. And it's not congruent with the committee that has equal opportunity in its name. So uh, a proposed action should be decided upon through a reasoned argument and not through numerical domination. Those are my comments I presented to them at the beginning and uh, reiterated that uh, again um, afterwards. It was, uh, Say my experience that those classified staff who have volunteered to be on committees are very knowledgeable and willing to actively participate in discussions. Um, I have uh, two, two reports. Um, one I already submitted to you from the BC Academic Senate and then uh, Von Mills from uh, Saracosa asked me to also present her report. Um, Last month, I shared the, uh, the good news that uh, about our unique headcount being higher than the pre-COVID fall of 2019. We were still slightly lower in FTS at that time. Uh, well, now in October, we've exceeded fall 2019 numbers in multiple areas. Um, unique headcount and FTS and percentage of full sections. Um, the, the next paragraph that I have there in my written report gives you the details of where uh, students are enrolling. Um, the, the single largest uh, mode right now is our BC Online, the asynchronous. I've got all the stats in there. I know that uh, one of uh, you would really look at that in a former life <laughs> as well, just with all the details of that. Um, the next highest uh, mode is our face-to-face -face when you put together the, um, the Panorama Campus, the BC Southwest and Delano. And then the, the one after that is our BC Hybrid, which combines face-to-face -face and online asynchronous. That's you know with our FTES uh, basis there. And then when we look at unique headcount, again, I have the stats there for you. You can see that uh, more than half of uh, the students have... Uh, BC online, you know, as part of their repertoire of classes that they're taking. And uh, next then is our face-to-face -face and, um, and then after that is our BC hybrid. The, uh, the unique headcount percentages that I have in there, they, they will add up to more than 100% and that's because students are taking a mixture of the online face-to-face -face and the BC hybrid. It, it's good to offer a, a variety of instructional modes because there is demand for a variety of modes. At the, at the September board meeting, I, I shared some concerns from, from faculty about the early college program from an accreditation angle. At the September District Consultation Council, the idea of forming a district-wide task force was discussed. Um, the, the task force would research how other states have ensured a college level quality and dual enrollment. California's not the first one uh, to do this. Um, a task force could also look at other methods of uh, quality assurance besides directly evaluating faculty. Things could be like syllabus materials review using common assessment instruments um, at certain points in the semester faculty mentorship programs, I and mean, just a lot of variety of ways uh, to do this. And I hope we can get that task force form soon. Um, the next part of my report is about the, um, the board policy 6200 and 6250, which we had a first reading uh, here today. The, the proposal to increase the, the hard floor of 15% for the unrestricted district-wide reserve and the soft ceiling of 20% by five percentage points. So you know, get up to 20 and 5% respectively there. 
in those uh, in board policy 6200 and 6250 is going through the full consultative process in all three college academic centers because those board policies are rely primarily upon the advice and judgment of the academic senate. The reserve designated as district wide in board policy does not include the already sizable reserves held by the individual colleges and to which the board can draw from in dire financial conditions because those reserves are also under your control. Um, no one in the BC faculty is denying the reality of the potential fiscal headwinds coming soon due to a recession. No one in the BC faculty is denying the value of a healthy reserve to weather storms on choppy fiscal seas. However, the BC faculty, and based on conversations I, with the other two Senate presidents, I can safely say that the Saracosa and PC faculty as well are very concerned about taking advantage of the fear of an upcoming short-term recession to codify permanently locking away an even larger amount of taxpayer money in good times and bad times by that proposed change to the board policy because of the following undisputed facts. The first is that an extensive amount of research by the district-wide budget committee in 2013-14, using the best practices from the GFOA, FICMAT, PARS, PUBO, and CCLC, and a detailed analysis of the district's cash flow and actual ending balances in the 2010 to 2014 fiscal years, which included the time period when the Great Recession hit the community colleges, led to the current language of a 15% hard floor and 20% soft ceiling in the board policy in April 2014. Second is that a comparison of our district's reserves from with all of the other community college districts in California over the past 10 years of certified expenditures and reserves in the CCFS 311 reports shows that our the KCCD's reserve percentage has been in the top five over the past eight years and is at the second place for the most current certified year. And is at the top first place for districts with more than 10,000 FTES. The budget reserve percentage was calculated by the state chancellor's office using the same methodology for all of the college districts. So it is a true apples to apples comparison of all of the college districts in California. The third fact is that KCCD weathered the severe <coughs> storm of the Great Recession when the board policy had a hard floor of just 5%. And we weathered the recent smaller storm of deferments in state funding during the pandemic, pandemic when the board policy had a hard floor of 15%. In other words, the sound fiscal practices allowed and enabled in the current board policy, and even when the board policy had a lower floor, have kept our district healthy and strong through very powerful financial storms, including the once in a lifetime storm of the Great Recession. Current board policy will enable us to weather any upcoming recession just fine. There is no need to raise the floor any higher, locking away any more taxpayer money from being used in the instruction of our students. As elected officials, the Board of Trustees should provide a sound justification to its taxpaying constituents why even more money should be automatically locked away in a reserve as a matter of policy instead of being used in the instruction of students as intended by the taxpayers. You on the board, like the rest of us, expect such accountability of our elected representatives at the state and national level. So the faculty are expecting the same accountability of you as stewards of taxpayer funds allocated for higher education. As of yet, we, including students and classified staff, have not heard any reason data-driven rationale for permanently codifying 
a, re, a higher reserve floor in board policy, it would be for good times and bad times, nor why the flexibility already given in current board policy will not enable the district to weather the upcoming short-term recession. If there is such a reason justification, we respectfully act, ask that you please share it with faculty and your constituents before changing the board policy. The, uh, for the, for the Saracoso, on behalf of Juan Mills, the academic Senate president there up in, uh, in Saracoso, she asked me to, to read these, these comments. Uh, on her behalf. At our last Academic Senate meeting, the Saracoso faculty voted against the proposed amendment to Board Policy 6200-6250, which would raise the current district reserves threshold. We feel that given the district's ability to weather the last recession with a much lower reserve threshold than the current proposed increase in reserves, is an unnecessarily conservative use of district funds. We will be considering for adoption a joint resolution shared between the three academic senates of the district at our Senate meeting next week to further illuminate the faculty position against the district's current proposal. As budget preparation is a clearly defined 10 plus one issue for which the district shall rely primarily upon the recommendations of the academic senates, we urge the Board of Trustees to reconsider these amendments to board policy. The Saracosa Academic Senate has also been engaged in discussions about course caps and in May of 2022 voted in support of equal class caps, regardless of the modality of the course. As class size has direct impacts on instructional quality and student success, we feel that this move will help ensure equitable and quality feedback and engagement with our ever-growing population of online students. We would like to engage with the board on continued discussion of class caps and consideration of amendments to board policy regarding how class caps are set. Saracoso continues its quest to improve our participatory governance structure and the consultative process. And the work of the Participatory Governance Task Force continues this year to revise our participatory participatory governance model. It is our sincere hope that these revisions will further improve communication and streamline processes college-wide, helping to further build trust and improve the college climate. We also continue to explore options for developing a local bachelor's degree and feel that such a program will only add further to our mission of being the first choice for higher education in our service area. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, right, we'll move on to classified report. Hi, everybody. My name is Mike Barrett. I'm with the CSEA Chapter 6.7 out of Saraposa. <clears throat> um, happy Thursday to you. <laughs> Um, I'll table the participatory governance stuff for a little while. <clears throat> um, uh, classified don't have a, a 10 plus one in regards to discussing um, the budget and everything, but uh, at least the Circosal, we're going to be discussing that prior to our next chapter meeting, our, our participatory governance process. I guess what I'd like to share with you is that um, from our perspective, what we've been seeing at Saracosa is that uh, when we're going through screening committees to fill vacant positions, we're seeing a um, few people applying. And then when you do have people that apply for the positions, a lot of those drop out. A good chunk of that is the pay. It looks like pay for a lot of these positions is um, a little under what's going on out there inside our service area. And I'm referring to Saracosa in this stage. We have a huge uh, service area for the current community college district. I mean, <laughs> the biggest district in, in the state, I think. So um, <clears throat> I, I guess 
we have a process where we're going to be reviewing classified positions shortly. And we're looking at the job descriptions. We're going to kind of go through this process for looking at what the pay process is. Um, one of the concerns with my e-board is that if we ramp up the uh, board policy requiring an increase inside what we're going to be putting away for reserves, it'll detract from that process of paying equitable pay for classified positions that need to be filled within the current community college district. Um, it's a crazy spot. I mean, I went through the uh, Great Recession <laughs> and some of the other stuff that happened here, and uh, I have a healthy respect for a good reserve. I promise you, I have a healthy respect for that. I really think it saved our tails, right? I'm just, I'm just, that's my belief. The question is, how much is too much? Um, in fact, classified employees on many of the, on, on all of the participatory governance committees, we're bringing the information back. We're getting some discussion back and forth between the three chapters. Um, and our process for participatory governance within CSEA is a little slower than what seems to be the norm for the faculty. Um, we're kind of a contentious lot. <laughs> uh, but we're working on it. And um, I want to thank you for the opportunity to allow us to work on it. Um, I want to thank Sean for the opportunity within CS within Saracosa for the process that we've kind of developed for participatory governance since we don't have a classified Senate. Um, I think you've got some really good classified employees in current community college district that honestly truly care about what's going on here within the district. <clears throat> And have a strong love for providing quality and excellent educational opportunities within the current community college district. Let's keep things uh, safe and happy for all of us. Thank you very much. Anyone else? For none, we'll go on to management reports. Good afternoon. Juanita Steele, president of the Kern Community College District Management Association. We are continuing to work diligently on behalf of our members. I'm pleased to announce a lunch and learn being led by Pamela Rivers, assistant director of the Academic Technology and Professional Development for Bakersfield College. It will be an interactive lunch and learn uh, web, uh, at noon on the 25th regarding the Chancellor's Office Vision Resource Center website. And this web webinar will orient attendees to how the website is oriented, organized, and will support their exploration of the resources that are available. So this month, it is my pleasure to recognize Dr. Ref Rodriguez, who has been instrumental in his role as the Porterville College Director of Dual Enrollment and CTE programs. Most recently, REF led the Porterville campus efforts with the Jumpstart pilot program. And in this new program, he invited 20 local high school students to participate in a four-week CTE program. He led that day-to-day -day operations of, a, of the program and worked with the industry partners to provide $1,500 partnerships and internships for students. He has regularly worked with partner high schools to offer CTE related dual enrollment courses, beginning with economics, computer information systems, and business. And he's looking to expand those into health and education. Dr. Rodriguez's ability to engage the campus, the community and industry partners is really a testament to his character and passion for his work. Part of his role is to engage with those administrators and uh, get students enrolled in dual enrollment and become acquainted with the process. All of the folks that he works with indicate how extremely pleasant he is to work with. 
and his sincerity and his communication style. Ref has come to Portable College from Loyola Marymount a little over a year ago. And you may not know this, but he recently received his second doctor of, doctoral degree as a doctor of social work from USC. He also has a doctorate from Fielding in educational leadership and change. He has also served in a number of roles in um, Porterville and is a valued member of the Porterville College and Kern Community College District. But well, won't y'all join me in just giving him a round of applause for all he's done. There are also a couple of other employees we'd like to recognize at this time. Uh, first is Carl Bowman. He is a database administrator too. He has provided employees with day-to-day, minute-to-minute support on Banner. And we want to wish him the best as he retires this month. We also want to recognize John Word, who is the Portable College Facilities Manager. If I recall correctly, he's been there maybe almost 30 years. And he was a tremendous support during the 2021 fires and just has done so much in support of that campus over his decades of service. And so again, I wanna thank everyone for all the work that they've done and look to hear more from the Management Association. We have more Lunch and Learns planned and uh, there'll be more to come. Thank you so much. Thank you. And just the college reports. Good afternoon, President Agbalag, trustees, and Chancellor Christian. Thank you for the opportunity to address you for a few minutes. You have my written report, and I'm not going to I'm not going to repeat much of that at all. It occurs to me that I do need to comment on some of what you have heard today. Um, both from our Academic Senate President, as well as some of our classified staff uh, colleagues. It is just a few days ago that we sat in a room and celebrated the inaugural Jack Hernandez Bronesis Award winner, and that just happened to be Professor Nick Strobel. And the Bernice's Award is all about practical wisdom. And so it really gave me great pleasure to hear Professor Strobel articulate in his own words his values that completely are parallel to the values that Bakersfield College has in terms of the importance of collegial consultation, in terms of the importance of participatory governance, and in terms of our values, just in terms of diversity, that is one of our core values that have, that have stood us well for many, many years. Nick also mentioned, and I'm, it's, it's thrilling to see our enrollment numbers. And you know we've been talking about that now for several months, but I want to remind everybody that the reason we have the enrollment numbers that we have is because of the joint work of all of us. It was our faculty members, our classified staff, and our managers working together hand in hand that resulted in the exceptional numbers that you see in front of you. And that is again a testimony to the importance of our working together and collaborating. I also want to commend Professor Strobel for his focus, and he didn't mention it here today, but he does mention it very often. He does embody the, the, the focus on persistence. And he talks about the importance of the leaky bucket, not continuing to be a leaky bucket, because persistence is the key to our student success. And to that extent, we, at Bakersfield College have, are grateful to you, the trustees, for having allowed us to create, through our Innovation Fund Award, a program to try to get students back into our, our uh, educational system. 
That is because of the resources that you have provided to us. The same resources led us to hire 84 full-time faculty members and all of the resources resulted in our enrollment growth. So I wanna say thank you to you for helping us make that happen. I also feel like I need to take a second and talk about accreditation. Um, Professor Strobel has reminded us in a couple of meetings now about accreditation. And it's not too long ago, it was in spring of 2019, that BC received its accreditation report from ACCJC. And there were several factors over there that were, that were noted in the, uh, in the accreditation report. Many of them were commendations and the commendations were given to us for our collaborative work, for our inclusivity, for creating an empowering environment for participation campus-wide by all constituent groups. And it's a good reminder that that is something we have to hold dear to our heart and to continue to try to further and ensure we get that again the next cycle around. Uh, the last thing I do want to note is we also got on our, on our accreditation report, we got a commendation for the district, for the fiscal stability that the district has provided to the college. And in particular, for the resources such as, and it included the language of reserves. So I want to note that that was a commendation. It was something that was important. And I think we have to remember that as we talk about reserve levels as we move forward. That's all I have, thank you very much. Thank you, President Adler. President Agbalan, trustees, Chancellor Christian. Uh, in addition to my report that I previously submitted, I wanted to, um, Bakersfield's really good at showing some great numbers. I wanted to share a couple um, for Sarah, though. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, on uh, Wednesday, September 28th, uh, the state released its updated transfer level gateway completion dashboard for the most recent cohort year which was 2021. This is the dashboard that comes out of the AB 705 legislation and tracks the completion rates of transfer level English and mathematics. So when you look at the Central Valley region, uh, the, the 2021 transfer level completion rates in English, Saracoso had the highest in our region at 74%. So it was just, I wanted to share that. Um, in addition to when we look at math completion, we were tied for second place at 61%. Um, and I'll give a shout out to Porterville, who was tied for first at 65% as well. So I um, wanted to share that. Also at the last uh, board meeting, our student trustee shared uh, her reports out from the various uh, student government uh, presidents and um, ours had talked about the lack of food service on our campus. We had lost our contract with one of the local companies. Well, we have since re um, signed a new contract and they've jumped right in. Uh, Beansters is who we are working with now. Um, they own a local pizza and coffee place as well and have been providing food service now um, for, for a little bit uh, since our last meeting. So we're happy to have them on board and partner with us providing not only students, but staff and faculty as well, um, some coffee, much needed coffee in the morning. Um, and so I wanna thank uh, Vice President Hauk as well for um, jumping on, on that very quickly. Uh, and um, last but not least during, you know, when the, uh, I wanna thank the board as well, uh, and just on record for, for during your unrestricted reserves analysis in looking at that, um, you know, funding our investment proposals and those innovation awards and stuff to, to allow us to, to work towards bringing those students back to our campuses so that we can serve their needs throughout our vast community. So just wanted to go on record and supporting them as well and thanking you for that. Thank you. Thank you, President Hancock. <laughs> President Nabi. Yep. President Agbalo. Trustees, Chancellor Christian, um, good to be here. 
The PC update provides highlights of some of the things that are happening at our college, some of our proud moments, uh, proud of faculty who are doing incredible things. But I'd like to just highlight a couple of things that have happened since we produced that PC update. One, um, our female soccer team had the first home game at the stadium. And this is significant because it marks the start of a new sport this semester with female soccer and also marks the almost completion of that renovation of the stadium, which is a project funded by Major G. So this is great. There's still a few things to finalize in that project, but we're happy that this is finally happening. I also like to share that. Quite a, quite a contingency from, from KCCD went to HACU, the Hispanic Association of Colleges and Universities Conference in San Diego. It was a great experience. Um, Portable College brought a team of students. We had about 10 students who really enjoyed and learned a lot in their leadership pathway um, offered at HACU. So it was an incredible experience. And I am grateful for the faculty and staff who chaperoned and went with them. Um, I was, it was also a proud moment for me to watch my team under the leadership of our Vice President of Student Services, Primavera Arvizu, present on a partnership with um, PUSD um, for supporting a pathway in education and early, um, early education pathway. Um, and it's this partnership that really shows uh, the, the great work that is done and what pathways do to our students to complete um, their education leading to a job. So that was great, they, they did an awesome job. And I was also very proud to watch our own chancellor, Dr. Christian, present on the partnership between uh, philanthropy and colleges. And it was great for me personally to hear the, the story of Guided Pathways work at BC um, over the last seven years. Um, and how everything came about, because BC has a great reputation on their work with guided pathways. And sometimes we don't know the backstory and how that came about. So I was grateful to be there to watch you and I was very impressed as well. Um, and it was about, you know, accelerating an outcome with a partnership and is an outcome with equity. Um, I also wanna echo uh, my colleagues here in thanking you, the board, for supporting our innovation projects, our investments, for our work on recovery with equity. Um, I also appreciate um, your work and how difficult it is to project for the future. And all you're trying to do is being fiscally prudent. And it's easy to say in hindsight, well, years ago we were in good shape and should be in good shape now, but I appreciate probably the challenge on knowing what the future holds and you're trying to prepare, prepare us for that. And I appreciate that. And also knowing that you invest back on our colleges and that approval of those funds is, is an example of it. So thank you for that. <laughs> and last, um, maybe kind of a personal comment. I just want to say that as we report on our work um, of recovery with equity, um, guided pathways for equitable outcomes. Equity and inclusivity are values that we have embraced. Um, inclusion is a commitment that we have in this district for our HSI colleges. So it's part of our mission. So I hope that we continue to support the work at the colleges to create a safe and kind environment that supports truly diversity, equity, and inclusion. Thank you. Thank you, President. Chancellor's report. Yes. Um, uh, good afternoon. Um, I just have good news to share. This past month has been a, a busy month for me. I've been uh, all over the state, San Diego, San Francisco, Sacramento, Riverside, and um, the I started with an invitation to the Board of Governors, and the reason I received the invitation was to present the good work of our three colleges in the Kern Community College District as it relates to enrollments. 
So board members, uh, Jennifer has at your um, uh, table, at the spot at your table, this one slide, I was asked to develop one slide uh, to represent the good work. And it was a good homework assignment for me because I wanted to have 10 slides or 20 to really talk about the different metrics in the student-centered funding formula that we have moved at the current community college district. But I distilled it down to uh, enrollment gains, which you will see. And the numbers you see at Kern, it is an anomaly. It is not uh, the norm across uh, the state of California community colleges. The enrollment growth, double digit enrollment growth across our colleges. And then they had also asked us to disaggregate the data. So you can see the bar graph show the data disaggregated. And again, we are so committed to student success with equity. And then if you move to early college, the story is similar. And when you move to the bottom part of that um, particular slide, you will see that there is a new area that our colleges, and thank you, presidents, and uh, faculty and classified staff and administrators, uh, taking on adult learners and looking at CDCPs, career development and college preparation, and of course, uh, our CFO will remind us that CDCPs, the apportionment is at a higher rate than the base enrollment. So our um, entry into the conversation, of course, is student success with equity. But at the same time, we are always looking at our business model and making sure that this ship is stable. Uh, because if this ship is not stable, we're not going to be able to focus on the work of student success and equity. Employees need to be stable. So again, that business lens comes into play. And finally, when you look at the student success metrics, we're not only bringing our students, but we're showing significant advancement on our completion agenda, completing that certificate and completing that associate's degree onto a baccalaureate degree. So in, in my travels, um, what I'm reminded, even though the work sometimes internally seems grueling as we engage in, in discussions and deliberations, when I go outside, I just am reminded how amazing this district is. And I want to comment on two aspects that already the three presidents have commented. The first is our constituent group collaboration. We cannot do it without our classified staff. We cannot do it without our faculty. We cannot do it without our administrators. The presentation that the Portable College team did at Haku, both Claudia and I were sitting there so proud. It shows the representation at Portable of Guided Pathways where it takes that ed advisor to be making those contacts with students for them to succeed. And when you close the loop with the money that rolls in that allows us to hire more faculty and more staff. So we have a history of working together and our future is also going to be working together. The second comment I wanna make is about this particular board, these seven board members. And many of us, you know, the 2000 employees who work at this amazing district, often I don't think I have done a good job representing the connection between the decisions this board makes to the health and well being of our employees and therefore our students, because our employees need to be healthy and doing well to really keep that commitment, the fire of commitment burning bright. So let me start with a proposal that I worked with our CFO to take to the finance committee. It was asking the finance committee to hire more faculty. Some of the academic Senate presidents and all of the college presidents have been telling me that we need to hire faculty and classified staff. And you will see that this finance committee of the board made that recommendation to the board in September when the board approved the budget. 
and significant dollars have come to support instruction and to support student success. It would not have happened if this board did not have the resources to be able to release, the, release that funding. So when you look at the staff we have hired and when I talk to my colleagues across the state, we are in the lead position in success metrics, in faculty hires, in our ed advisor hires. And the reason we are able to do that is because of the stability and the fiscal prudence of this board. It is something that I see intimately in hope because I'm chancellor. And I saw it one step removed as president of Bakersfield College, but I see it. And it is all of us, board members, administrators, classified staff, faculty, locking arms together that allows our students, like our student trustee, to be able to soar high. It is us working together and finding the solutions together. So that's all I have to report. Thank you. Thank you, Chancellor Christian. Move on to Board of Trustees reports and inquiries. Begin to my left with our student trustee. Hi, everyone. Um, just a few notes to take. Um, on October 3rd, Bakersfield College opened the second Peace Garden, and um, it will give many students a place of mindfulness. And um, on their time on campus, the opening of the space allows students in the greater community to come, reflect, relax, reflect, and recharge. Um, also on October 5th, uh, the Bakersfield College Student Government Association hosted the KCCD Board of Trustee Area 3 candidate meet and greet. And the renegade community got to meet candidates seeking to represent Area 3 and learn more about their work interest in the role and vision for success. Um, this year's ballot bowl, um, I would like to encourage all current community colleges to participate. And I'm very excited to share that Bakersfield College is ranked number one out of 116 California Community College for this year's ballot bowl. Uh, last, lastly, I would like to note Bakersfield College uh, homecoming begins October 15th with the Renegade Promenade. This year's theme is uh, Renegade Fever. So we would love for you all to attend and feel the fever. Thank you. Thank you. Bounce over to my right, Trustee Corkins. Uh, nothing really to report. I'm I'm going to need some clarification on what we were talking about this process for classified and faculty. Maybe you can help me. I, it's a committee. It's not under our purview, I don't think, is it? Somebody want to give me some idea of what's going on here? Well, I the, like what I heard. So what do we do? The EODAC is a committee at Bakersfield College and uh, my understanding is that there's an annual process of reviewing the membership of the committee. And my understanding is that there was a proposal um, to change maybe the composition to have an equal representation of classified and, and faculty. I know Trustee Corkins, I've taken uh, detailed notes uh, on the comments made by our uh, two colleagues. And I also know that Vice Chancellor A. Bali has been uh, following the discussion, we will uh, follow up with BC uh, leadership and the EODAC committee uh, to see how we can facilitate a resolution and we're happy to report back to the board. Uh, yeah, I'd appreciate that. It, it was a little distressing uh, with the environment that we're trying to create here, but to have something like that go on. Uh, the other comment was on uh, on budget or Reserve and the chair of finance may rather speak to this than me. Um, uh, you want me to? I'm hesitant, uh, Mr. Strobel, to even respond to it because I don't think you all understand. You didn't understand it 10 or 12 years ago when we had this battle. You don't understand it today. But we're not going to have a battle. Uh, this, the college budget in 20, and if that was a once in a lifetime uh, recession, hang on because it wasn't, we got a worse one coming. And we could see it, we can see what's happening. That recession was caused by government. Housing authorities and what they did caused the recession and drug business, mortgage-backed securities and bankrupted banks, Lehman Brothers and things like that, all because of government policy. We see government policy right now. 
I've never seen the money flow like it's flowed this year. And our Pfizer in Sacramento said the same thing three hours ago. I've never seen anything like this. And that's why you have inflation. And the feds can't stop it just raising rates. You got to quit printing money. But that's, that's an economics lesson. Uh, the budget in 2009-10, yeah, we, we, we saved jobs. Uh, we financed categorical funding. Uh, we balanced the budget when nobody else could. And we may be the top five in the college on reserves a day. Uh, I want to be the top one. And there's a darn good reason for it. And uh, the difference between then and now, we're twice the size. You're double the budget. And if we don't build our reserves, we'll be in trouble. You quoted some interesting facts, and I appreciate that. And I, I appreciate your intelligence and, and your articulation of the issue. I, I don't think you said anything that was wrong. Uh, problem is, the comparatives that you're using are other colleges, other municipalities, other systems. The comparative I use is the private sector. And I will tell you as a private sector person, this would be an inadequate reserve. None of us would run our reserves at this point. Run them much higher. And as I meet with private businesses, corporate businesses, and my clients are worldwide, everybody is scared to death about what's going on because it's not just the US and it's not just Ukraine. It's what's happened in England, pension budgeting, pension funding, what's happening in China that we don't know about. And all these factors, the world become very small financially to drag us down rapidly. So I've been echoing along with Trustee Meek and others that I think we need to, to build the budget reserve higher. And I don't like violating the soft ceiling because I think that's counterintuitive. Let's put the budget levels at the levels we wanted 10 years ago or seven years ago, whenever we did it, and put them back there. But Again, I, I appreciate we rely primarily upon. We want your input. We appreciate your comments. But if you're really looking for the facts and so forth, there's a whole list of what we did. But uh, the real fact is we've gone double in size. Uh, we have a government that's spending money like it never has before. And that was good. Some good things have come out of it. And I appreciate that. But uh, as a business person, I'm scared. And final thing I will tell you is the Legislative Analyst Office for California just comment 60 days ago, we talked about it again today, and we could have a deficit of 5 billion to 15 to 20 billion this year because of the spending. We're already at 2.8, like something like we're about 2.8 billion now deficit in California. You can't spend like this and keep going. And speaking to what the chancellor said, I appreciate her comments very much. I want a very healthy reserve so that when it hits, and it will hit, it always will, that uh, you and your colleagues don't lose their jobs. We don't close departments. We don't lay off classified. We didn't do it last year. We kept everybody here. We kept going. I think that was critical for our students, for our mission. So that's just one man's opinion. But Rusty Meek has a better, she'll give you a better spin than that. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm My right. spin would be there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. Does that complete your report, Trustee Me? No. Go good. next. Yeah, it's <laughs> But her prepare for it. She's <laughs> more no, no. This is a very sobering meeting today, and I'm really distressed. Sorry that we have conflict. Not what we're not what we built educating all of our colleagues not what we built. I'm really sorry that I do need in A but Sonia have and the good work that's being done across the which is behind me. Um, I'm very, very proud of the work that the finance very proud of the work. And 
we do kind of run it like a, it is, to me, this is big business. We have a huge budget, we have a lot of employees, and we educate many, many, but without the research, without the teacher that, uh, whether any storms ahead of us. Part of time. I would say. Thank you. Trustee Miko, let's cross over to Trustee Jimena. <laughs> I'm really concerned about the inappropriate comments that were made in the Equal Opportunity Committee and would like to ask our chancellor to investigate, to investigate the complaints and to keep the board updated about the investigations. And I also wanna say that I'm really proud of the work that our college district is doing, going out there to, the, to different conferences and, to, and doing presentations and the amazing work that we're doing. I saw a presentation that Dr. Staff did and enrollment last week and I've been following Portobello College social media so I was following the presentation that you guys did in San Diego so it's really amazing that we get to share uh, the amazing work that we're doing with other college districts and I'm also really excited about the Portobello women's soccer team I really like the uniform they have a really good uniform and Portobello is a soccer community so I'm really Happy that we were able to bring soccer into that community, and that ends my report. Thank you, Jesse Jimenez. Jesse Carter. Um, I too am a little bit uh, discouraged uh, with the news. Your report today. Uh, you know, when I first came on board here, um, there was a report that was put out that, that something like forty percent of the the uh, faculty um, of KCCD had a, a deep distrust of their coworkers. And um, I was shocked by that. Uh, when, I, when I first came on board, I thought, wow, what have I got myself into? And um, over, over the years that I've been here, um, we've made a lot, of, a lot of big changes and um, we've seen that change and we've seen a, a lot more getting along better, it seemed like, feel it and hear that it's the round, it sets me quite a lot. And I too would like to um, ask that investigate this. Who's, who's causing it? We need to nip this in the bud and get it over, kind of, so that we can move on. The family. Uh, then, then as far as the budget goes and what have you, I think that um, you know our budget committee has led it, led us through some tough times. Trust them to that, uh, and, and it's a good. It would be a good practice for each of us to to uh, consider that in our own plans. Well, it's coming up. Well, I certainly do. Um, seems like. Money has no value anymore. Can't just keep pulling it on. Fire to make fire flame up higher. That's not working. Two thoughts to share. Appreciate the work that you guys do. I appreciate your day. And I know sometimes it's difficult to stand up and say it happened. Appreciate you doing that. Thank you, Trustee Carter. Let's see, Connell. Nothing to report at this particular moment. Trustee Gomez Heitzberg. Thank you. I'd like to lead off with following up some of the comments about finances. Um, I was on the other side of the room the last time we had a recession. And so I had responsibility in that role of sitting down across from employees and saying, you may not have a job. You know, unless the funding mechanism changes at the state level. I don't want anyone to have that kind of responsibility again. 
not receiving, not giving. So I strongly support having um, fiscally responsible mindset as we move into this next situation. And I so appreciate that I think this is the first time that I can remember in 40 years that we were able to go to that reserve and to look at ways that we can fund some of the things at the colleges that might not have happened otherwise. And that's the other part of this. We, people are our most valuable resource. We want to keep them. And the other part is we want to support the colleges. And whether the, it's a college reserve or a district reserve, we have to be able to be able to say we have choices as opposed to we have no choices. And I know that happens in some districts. I too have a heavy heart today. I have served on the EODAC. I know how important it is. You hear my colleagues at this say. You need to look into this, not just look into it, but have a healing, but have a healing. Please. Take a minute just to close the meeting. A couple of remarks, colleagues deeply disturbed about some of the things that were shared with us. Or Take a minute just to close the meeting. Remarks. Um, all right. To, sit here with my colleagues deeply disturbed about some of the things that were shared with us earlier today. And I trust that our district staff will answer our call and look into these issues and reach a resolution that can be favorable to everybody involved. Um, Trustee Meek mentioned uh, some things and Trustee Carter also that you know, reminded me that this is not just a college district, this is a family. And this family, like our own personal families, have squabbles from time to time. But at the end of the day, we're together, we're united. And, you know, we heard a lot of information today from our chancellor and college presidents that our community college district and the individual campuses are really moving the needle. We're recognized not just locally, but statewide, nationally. And we're continuing the work to help not just our students, but our region economically and beyond. And that work can only be done from solid foundation. I can't take credit for the solid foundation that this board has built over time, but historically, you know, with the leadership of Trustee Meek and Trustee Corkins and others who've been here, um, I'm sure it wasn't easy to build up the reserves to where they're at today. And just like our household budgets, it's difficult to sock money away from the savings. You can imagine what it's like for a big business enterprise like this. This is the reason why we're able to do the things that we're doing. I had the pleasure of serving on an elementary school district board before I joined this board. I worked in local government at the County of Kern, and I can tell you there are a lot of brilliant people who want to do a lot of phenomenal things. Get ideas for programs and innovative ideas that I could help. We really could never do anything. We never had the resources to do. Joining this board, it's been a pleasure because we've been able to launch so many new and innovative things and support our staff in ways that I never envisioned could happen in local government. And we've been able to do it here because of the strength of our foundation. So I bring it back together that this is a family. Yeah, we have our disagreements. Ultimately, we're working together. I'll give you an example that just happened a couple hours ago. I represent Area 4 on the College District Board. It includes Northern Kern County. Some of those communities include Delano, McFarland, Wasco. Over the last few days, there's been a little bit of violence in those towns. We had shootings in McFarland, Delano, Wasco. The threat of violence is so severe that local superintendent and school district in McFarland decided to cancel its athletic events for the week. Maybe other school districts will do the same. Yeah, athletics is not academics, but athletics sometimes brings students to school. 
and it's part of the extracurricular activities that makes the entire school experience complete. Farland will be celebrating its homecoming next week, coinciding with our homecoming at Bakersfield College, for example. They're not certain where they're going to have their game because the threat of violence is real. I'm pleased to tell you that I took a phone call from a superintendent to a chancellor. And because of that familial relationship, we're going to be hosting that football game at Memorial Stadium next Saturday. It's uh, right. This is what happens when we work together. We're moving big agendas. The work is arduous, stress is high. Sometimes we lose focus on the things that we're supposed to be. Today, it just took a couple of people to get together. Working together made a big difference. That include our meeting. We're here by adjourned.